When empires crumble, the echoes of their downfall resonate through history, offering us a blueprint of power dynamics that can predict the fate of modern superpowers. Welcome to a journey through time, where the grandeur of Rome's expansion, its societal complexities, and the eventual decline provide a compelling parallel to China's rise. In the same vein as Rome, China has soared to economic heights, flexed its technological might, and fortified its central governance. Yet, as we peel back the layers of this global giant, we find uncanny reflections of Rome's ancient dilemmas. Demographic shifts, regional inequalities, and an economy grappling with its own success. Can China circumvent the pitfalls that once ensnared Rome, leveraging historical hindsight to carve a resilient future? Or is it poised on the brink of its own historic downfall? Join us as we unpack the past, interrogate the present, and explore the threads that bind the fate of empires across millennia in order to understand how the lessons of ancient Rome might just forecast the trajectory of today's global titans. Let's begin. Drawing parallels between the fall of historical empires and modern nations is more than an academic exercise. It's a way to understand the dynamics of rise and fall in global power. The story of Rome's decline, with its internal conflicts, economic troubles, and territorial overreach, provides a multifaceted lens through which to examine China's contemporary situation. China, much like Rome during its zenith, has experienced a meteoric rise marked by economic surges, technological leaps, and strong central governance. These attributes harken back to Rome's era of expansion and cohesion. Yet, the picture is not without its blemishes. China's demographic shifts, regional disparities, and economic inequalities echo the cracks that emerged in Rome before its eventual collapse. These fissures pose a serious question. Can China manage its colossal economic and geopolitical landscape more effectively than Rome did with its empire? The challenges are gargantuan, akin to those Rome faced with its sprawling territories and diverse populations. But China has the advantage of historical insight, a resource Rome lacked. The modern tools of governance, the intricate web of global connections, and the perspective gained from past empires afford China the opportunity to navigate around the historical traps that ensnared Rome. China stands at a pivotal juncture, capable of either repeating historical mistakes or carving out a novel, enduring path. Reflecting on Rome's past sovereigns can also shed light on this discourse. Let us delve into the story of Numa to understand better. Numa's reign, with its emphasis on religious integration and societal reforms, is similar to China's endeavors to cultivate cultural harmony within its vast diversity. Such strategies are vital to any nation's stability. In contrast, the aggressive expansion under Tullus Hostilius serves as a cautionary tale of the perils tied to an assertive foreign policy, a tightrope that China is currently walking. Infrastructure development is another area where China echoes Rome's ancient strategies. Rome's construction of fortifications and expansion of political institutions like the Senate were crucial to its consolidation of power. Similarly, China's colossal infrastructural projects serve the same purpose, even as it learns from the past that the manner of consolidating power can significantly impact the duration and stability of its rule. China's present-day parallels with the Roman Republic are perhaps most evident in the structural changes aimed at avoiding excessive centralization of power. Just as the Roman plebeians gradually gained political influence, the Chinese population, now more informed than ever, may aspire to a greater voice in governance, challenging the current centralized paradigm. The Roman Republic's political machinery, with its assemblies and consular system, offers valuable insights for China. Balancing the power of the elite with the populace, managing economic disparities, and integrating a diverse state are challenges that China faces today. As it steers through these historical challenges of empire building, China's ultimate success will depend on maintaining unity without resorting to oppression, pursuing expansion without overreaching, and pushing forward with modernization while keeping the populace's support. The democratization of the Roman Republic was set in motion with the law of 287 BCE, which broke down the patrician control over legislation. Today, China's political scene echoes this push for broader participation, although the Communist Party's firm hold on power persists. This urge for democratization is a common thread that weaves through the fabric of history. 
In ancient Rome, the Centuriate Assembly, structured to mirror the military and wealth hierarchy, mirrored the way economic status dictates political clout. In modern China, even though the systems differ, the narrative is somewhat similar. Wealth equals influence. The Chinese government strives to strike a balance between economic expansion and social equilibrium. Rome's growth was spontaneous, in stark contrast to China's meticulously planned Belt and Road Initiative, aimed at broadening its global influence through calculated economic endeavors. Rome's policy of assimilating conquered people and extending citizenship has its counterpart in China's attempt to integrate its diverse regions, although this comes with its own set of challenges and controversies. Governing distant provinces was a complex task for Rome, similar to the issues China confronts in overseeing its vast lands. Both civilizations have seen a delicate dance of power between central and local authorities. China utilizes advanced surveillance and policy enforcement to maintain its grip, echoing the autonomy once granted to Roman governors. Economically, both empires share a cornerstone in infrastructure development. The Romans built roads and standardized their currency, whereas China is unifying its nation through high-speed railroads and digital currency initiatives. These developments are the modern-day parallels to Roman roads and the denarius, designed to connect people, facilitate trade, and consolidate control. The shift from small land holdings to extensive estates in Rome is mirrored by China's move from traditional to industrial-scale agriculture. This evolution has deep ramifications for social structures and the economy, hinting at possible disparities and unrest, much like in ancient Rome. Moreover, the importance of urban development is strikingly parallel in both civilizations. Rome's sewers and aqueducts are akin to China's grand infrastructure projects today, both serving dual purposes of functionality and national pride. The story of Scipio Africanus in 210 BCE illustrates individual ambition and constitutional innovation, as he was entrusted with military command despite being a private citizen. His victories in Spain and subsequent strategies reflect a brilliance in leadership that shifted the tide of power. Scipio's military acumen, especially his handling of the war in Africa and the decisive Battle of Zama, demonstrate a prowess akin to the statecraft that contemporary powers aspire to. However, with triumph comes complexity. Rome's expansion brought governance challenges and the appointment of powerful provincial governors to manage its sprawling territories. This imperial stretch resulted in societal strains, much like what China experiences today. Economic disparities, reliance on slavery, and the resulting social tensions in Rome led to a cascade of civil wars, signaling the downfall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. Julius Caesar's rise to power during these tumultuous times, fueled by his military success and strategic alliances, mirrors the political maneuvering seen throughout history. His bold actions, like crossing the Rubicon, marked a turning point from Republic to Empire, with Caesar as the inaugural emperor. China, much like Rome, faces the historical challenges of empire, managing vast territories, balancing central and provincial authority, economic divides, and the ambitions of powerful figures. The narrative of Rome's transition from republic to empire is not just a tale of the past, but a relevant mirror for contemporary nations, possibly even a foreshadowing of what could happen when empires face their downfall. The late Republic era of Rome was a crucible of political upheaval, epitomized by the bitter rivalry between Julius Caesar and Pompey. This animosity brought Rome to the brink of chaos, with the Senate's command to Caesar to disband his army sparking a civil war. Caesar's march on Rome was a defiant move against the Senate's authority, igniting a series of engagements across Italy, Greece, and Africa. Despite early challenges, Caesar's military genius shone at Pharsalus, though victory was marred by the staunch resistance of Pompey's last adherents and the eventual tragic choices of leaders like Cato and Scipio. The tremors of Caesar's assassination in 44 BCE shattered the Republic's already fragile state, opening the floodgates to more strife. The power vacuum led to the rise of the Second Triumvirate, with Mark Antony, Lepidus, and Octavian at the helm. However, their alliance was temporary, as Octavian's ascent marked the end of the Triumvirate and the dawn of the Roman Empire under his rebranded identity, Augustus. Augustus's tenure ushered in the Pax Romana, an era of unparalleled peace and prosperity, with Rome at its zenith under Emperor Trajan. Central to this period were reforms that solidified the emperor's power and often conferred a godlike status posthumously. The military, once the spearhead of expansion, became a ladder to societal elevation. Rome's surging urban population 
bolstered by slaves from conquests, highlighted both the economic vitality and the underlying social tensions. The empire's far-reaching territories were held together by a tapestry of sophisticated administration and technological marvels like roads and aqueducts. Roman religious tolerance helped weave the diverse cultural fabric, although Christianity's rise to state religion significantly altered this tapestry. Meanwhile, the allure of exotic goods, such as silk from China, underscored the complexities of Roman society, with even the Senate failing to curb the silk obsession despite economic and moral concerns. Roman women navigated a paradox of influence and restriction, with Augustus's moral legislation underpinning the era's patriarchal values. Yet despite these constraints, many women found ways to exert their influence subtly but effectively. As the empire waned, internal strife and external pressures led to its bifurcation by Emperor Diocletian and the establishment of Constantinople by Emperor Constantine. Though the Western Empire crumbled under the weight of Germanic invasions, the Eastern Empire, or Byzantine Empire, upheld Roman traditions, law, and politics for centuries, often ignored in Western discourse. Rome's indelible legacy extends far beyond its fall, having seeded many foundational elements of Western civilization. Modern governance worldwide still echoes the Roman Republic's principles, like the separation of powers. Roman law underpins Western legal systems, and their language gave rise to the Romance languages, enriching English immensely. Roman architectural and engineering innovations linger in modern constructions, and their religious legacy via Christianity is profound. The empire's influence pervades journalism, the Julian calendar, census systems, and even our numeral system. These contributions are a testament to Rome's enduring impact, showing how ancient innovations continue to shape our world, bridging the past and the present in a continuous narrative of human progress and adaptation. In conclusion, while the Roman Republic's political mechanisms and expansionist strategies offer a historical mirror, China's path reflects a nuanced understanding of these ancient lessons. By leveraging its unique political system, economic strategies, and infrastructural initiatives, China seeks to carve a trajectory that, while informed by the past, is distinctly tailored to the realities of the 21st century. Whether this will prevent a Rome-like fall or simply dress it in modern garb remains to be seen, but the parallels and divergences offer a rich canvas for contemplation and analysis.